Excellent! What's up guys, welcome back to Paul's Hardware. I am back after a bit of a hiatus after Computex, but I'm jumping right back into things with my June builds video. This is part of my monthly build series. Every month at the beginning of the month, I part out a couple systems, I build one of them during the middle of the month, and then hopefully sometime towards the end of the month, I actually test it, give you guys some performance numbers and some feedback on the build process. So starting off for this week, everything is fueled by you guys, and I ask for your feedback. By the way, if you wanna see any actual builds, since I'm not building anything today, check out my builds playlist, I'll link that in the description but uh, last month I asked what PC builds do you guys want to see in June and overwhelmingly uh, more than a third of you guys voted for the ultimate home theater PC which I'm very happy about because I've actually put this home theater PC option on the list for quite a few months in the hopes that it would be chosen at some point not finally has and I will be building my ultimate home theater PC but I have to confess that this month's Parts, parts lists were a little bit difficult to actually put together. There's weird things going on right now, like the imminent launch of a couple big platforms for both Intel and uh, in, in, um, Intel and AMD. Uh, there's the current issue with graphics cards being difficult to find due to uh, Ethereum mining and uh, other cryptocurrency mining that's going on out there that's making the prices go up uh, for AMD cards in particular and make them really hard to find. And with Nvidia cards, is starting to affect them as well. So. All that taken into con into, into consideration, uh, feel free to vote for next month's builds, uh, which is also linked in the description, what do you want to see in July. Put a pretty wide variety of options there so you guys can choose which one you feel would most suit your needs or that you most like to see. But I actually only have one build for this month. So this is my $1,250 silent, fanless home theater PC. And this is not the system that I'm going to be building later this month, although if you guys ask for it strongly enough, maybe I'll consider putting something together like this. Now, I went with a idea from the get-go here that this was going to be a higher-end system. Didn't decide until later on that the graphics cards, graphics capabilities were pretty much going to need to be nerfed if it was going to stay fanless. So that's why a couple of the parts are higher-end, uh, but it's meant to potentially be able to drop in a higher-end graphics card if you decide you're willing to deal with a little bit of fan noise in return for a lot more gaming performance. So we got a, a Core i5-7500T processor. Uh, if you guys are wondering why I didn't go with Ryzen uh, for this one, because there are 65 watt TDP processors for on the new Ryzen platform that would be great options. I wanted a fanless cooler. I decided on this no fan CR95C fanless cooler, and basically I'm not I'm not confident that this has an AM4 mounting bracket yet, so for that reason I went with Intel this time around. Uh, so for the main processor, I have an i5-7500T. This is the low power version of the quad-core i5, so kind of like a uh, 7600K, but no overclocking, and it runs at a lower frequency. Uh, it's still reasonably high priced. It's a little over 200 bucks, so this is a significant part of this uh, budget. However, you can keep that cool with something that is fanless because it's only got a 35-watt TDP. This actually has a 95-watt uh, dissipation capacity for the NoFan CR95C, but uh, I wanted it to stay relatively cool, so 35 watt TDP CPU, this beastly big old fanless cooler, and you should be good to go and keep your temperatures down and not have to worry about uh, any things getting too warm in there. I also had to pay close attention to the motherboard because uh, with this massive cooler, you actually very, very frequently lose the top slot, the top PCI Express slot on the motherboard. And NoFan actually has a chart on their site that tells you specifically which motherboards that does that with. Basically, you need a motherboard where the uh, top slot is one of these single slot deals, like here on this Azeroc board versus uh, having the X16 slot on the top. That gives you a little bit more space so you can still fit the graphics card in the by 16 slot. That meant that Mini ITX was out as well because that top slot is uh, too close for in pretty much any situation you have there. And I did want to add a supplemental graphics card. So of the current generation compatible with KB Lake motherboards that are out there, pretty much Azeroc was the only one who had a few that did have that configuration. And I went with the Azrock H110M HDS. It's only $52. Uh, probably the biggest downfall here is going to be the audio solution that you have. Um, but other than that, it's got all the connectivity you'd want for the CPU, uh, memory, and everything else that you're going to plug into this system. For memory, since we don't have to care about aesthetics internally in here at all, just went with the Corsair Vengeance LPX kit. It's low profile, solid, good compatibility, and 
mainly the low profile things that I was looking again for clearance with that CPU cooler. I wanted plenty of storage. I wanted a two terabyte SSD, but I ended up uh, going with the Mushkin Reactor one terabyte because again, that's a pretty significant part of the price. I wanted to have plenty of storage for media and that kind of thing that would be able to be called up quickly. And especially if you're doing DVR capabilities with this, uh, that's important. So uh, price per gigabyte, this is the cheapest one terabyte SSD that you can get right now. That's a current generation product. Um, there are of course plenty of other options in here, but 250 bucks for one terabyte is pretty much as good as it's gonna get right now when it comes to a big SSD with plenty of performance. This actually makes more sense to get two of those one terabyte SSDs as opposed to like one of the two terabyte SSDs because those start around six or probably 700 bucks at the at minimum right now. Going back to uh, the fanless stuff, we have the Palette GeForce GTX 1050 Ti Calm X video card. And here's another one where I was just sort of confused and had to figure stuff out. First off, it's passively cooled t uh, GTX 1050 Ti. So for 1080 gameplay, it's gonna do just fine. It's difficult to find in the US. Couldn't find it listed at just about any retailer right now except one called Bonanza where it's available for $180. It's a little bit easier to find actually if you're in uh, like the UK, the EU, uh, like Europe area, because and I know that's very general, but um, it uh, just seems to be like there's more fanless PC fans over there. If you want another option, here's an XFX fanless uh, RX 460. Again, I think the price on this is higher than it should be due to the aforementioned Ethereum uh, cryptocurrency mining that's going on, but it is fanless. It will allow you to do 1080 gameplay uh, and also connect up your 4K monitors and whatever else you want to do, or 4K uh, home theater television, and you know, get 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 off the ground if you can't find that palette card. Uh, for the case, I checked out quite a few home theater PC cases and I ended up deciding on the Define Mini C. It's micro ATX, first of all, so it matches with the motherboard. Uh, it's a fractal case, so it's got a nice clean design, so it should fit in in a living room environment. And uh, I've, I've actually built in this case, actually my current HTPC is in this case. Uh, I did choose the, uh, the fan, I'm sorry, the uh, side panel version that is solid, not, uh, not with the window like this one, so uh, that means it's gonna block the interior uh, view as well as the noise because we don't want any LEDs or anything like that uh, shining out for us. Now quietpc.com is actually where I browsed for quite a few things today as I was just doing some research on this and I actually have a listing here of a bunch of other options for uh, really quiet HTPC cases that are a bit more designed for a living room environment. Streetcom has quite a few. I was actually interested in this one further down uh, the Cooltech Coolcube Maxi V4 uh, which is an aluminum case doesn't look terribly expensive, only about 51 pounds on the uh, Quiet PC site, and um, comes in black or silver um, and micro ATX, and seems like a good option. But again, pretty much impossible to find in the US. So I'm mainly giving this as a shout out to any, you guys over in Europe who might actually be able to get your hands on some of this stuff. Sticking with fanless, we have to have a fanless power supply as well. So we have the Seasonic 520 watt 80 plus platinum, fully modular, um, you know. It's, it's a Seasonic, it's really solid build quality, it gets the job done. Hey, it's 80 plus platinum. Uh, it's really hard to find much higher wattage than this with the fanless power supply, but fortunately you don't need much beyond that. Now, I wanted to say at the beginning of this video, and I forgot to, but I'll say it now, that one of the big questions you should ask yourself if you're building a home theater PC is do you want cable? A lot of people don't, because cable cutting has become very popular, and if you have an internet connection, you can probably get access to all the stuff you want. However, a lot of people do have cable. A lot of people want to still have cable. They might have shows that they like to watch or that they can't access otherwise. And having cable in your HTPC, at least if you're in the US, is a little bit of a challenge depending on how you go about it. My recommendation, if you want a direct cable connection cable, not over the air, uh, is to go with something that has a cable card solution. You rent the cable card from your cable provider, whoever that happens to be. They should provide it to you for free. Some of them will charge you two to five bucks a month rental cost for it, which sucks, but that's usually less than the 10 to 15 bucks they charge you for a DVR. And then you can build your own HTPC that has all the DVR capabilities you want. I have a Seton card, C-E-T-O-N, and that company is pretty much toast at this point. They have gone out of the business, uh, but their cards still work. They're still functional, and the problem is that it's really difficult to get them to work with Windows 10. So my HTPC right now is still based on Windows 7. 
Here's another option though. This is an external Silicon Dust HD Home Run Prime. It has a cable card slot at the back. So right there in that M card slot is where the cable card goes in, connects to your network, and then you can actually connect up to three computers to be simultaneously watching uh, uh, you know, cable TV broadcasts at the same time. They have a chart here for the differences between their product. It's only about 125 bucks, and again, it's external, which is nice if you don't have room inside, if you don't have expansion slots for something like a PCI Express device. If you don't want cable, then just don't get this and get everything from the internet. That's that's the other option there. But um, I wanted to include that for people who want to want to keep cable, and that uh, also ties into my second sort of build, which isn't really a build. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Finally, I've got uh, this device, which is a basically a remote. Uh, you want a remote for a uh, HTPC. This one's by Feebyte or whatever, but it's inexpensive. It's only about 15 bucks. Uh, it's a Kodi remote, and it's also got a backlit mini wireless keyboard on the back, so you can type in stuff as well as using it as the remote. Works with a bunch of different stuff, but it's PC compatible, so it'll work with Windows to control Windows stuff. And there you go. And that's pretty much all the stuff you would need for an HTPC. Again, this one's a little bit on the higher end. It's uh, well over $1,200. It is completely fanless and passively cooled, though, so that's kind of the main thing about it. It would be silent, so for watching movies or anything else you want to watch and hear the audio for nice and clear, I think that would be a great option. Now again, I'm going to be building what is my ultimate home theater PC, and I actually have some questions and some dilemmas to overcome. So my current HTPC has been in service for well over a couple years now, and I have a couple older videos uh, on HTPCs on my channel if you guys want to check it out. It was like literally nothing but a, a, a bunch of stuff laying out on, on the desk at one point. I had a bunch of hard drives and RAID 5 configured in there at some point as well. Um, but all of this internal stuff is still in use. Uh, I've just swapped it over to uh, the Fractal Define Mini C, um, which I did, uh, I guess, in November of last year. The Define Mini C is currently living out in my living room, which I should hopefully have a shot of here in just a second. So there's my living room. I actually have a new TV now, uh, but it sits over here on the right side, and it's been doing a great job, although, you know, it gets dusty and stuff like that. So it stays quiet, but here's what I want to do for the next version, the next generation, my ultimate home theater PC. I want to be able to get cable TV signals and have the DVR capability. Uh, I want it to be able to game. Uh, I want it to be able to do modern games, which means, like, DirectX 10, I'm sorry, DirectX 12, uh, Windows 10 support would kind of be needed in there. Uh, finally, I want it to be not fanless. I don't think I can go that route, but I want it to be as quiet as possible, and therein lies my dilemma. So, if I want to stick with Cable Card, then I basically need to either run Windows 7, or I need to figure out how to shoehorn Windows Media Center, which is the current functional updates and gets all the broadcast listings and everything uh, utility or software in Windows that works for home theater PCs, they, 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 they removed it with Windows 10. You can still get it and install it with Windows 10, but I've searched the forums and there's like it's like hit or miss. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So uh, I'm considering taking my existing HTPC once again, which is based on a Maximus 5 Gene Z77 motherboard. It has an Intel uh, Ivy Bridge 3570K in it, I believe. Uh, and then it also has, of course, the Seton 4Tuner cable card, uh, as well as uh, it's got a big hard drive in there and an SSD. So if I want to stick with what works, I'll probably stay on Windows 7 and use the core components from that system to be one part of my HTPC, have that working and always on and functional as the DVR, but then have it put the DVR uh, captured footage into a shared folder that I can then access with a secondary system that I also build that's much more powerful, that runs Windows 10, that probably has a different uh, UI or interface, something like Kodi, uh, that I might be able to use. Kodi? It's Kodi, right? Not Kodai. So all that is to say, I need your guys' help in choosing what I should do. Uh, first off, should I stick with cable? That requires a cable card, of course. It requires Windows 7, unless I want to try some janky Windows 10 workarounds that may or may not work. Uh, it would also require me to keep using my existing HTPC core components because it's got Windows 7 and it's functional already. Also, my wife might veto that, so bear that in mind as well because she has some TV shows that she likes to watch. Should my HTPC be based on dual systems? Again, I'm considering taking one system, having it always on, 
having that be the system that does the DVR capture, having a secondary system that I turn on when I want to actually watch TV that has access to the DVR stuff and that is much more p powerful and capable of VR and that kind of stuff because I definitely want this to be a VR capable HTPC uh, or maybe you don't care. Maybe I don't, don't care about those things. Finally, should I build all of this in a pre-made case or one of those pretty cool HTPC cases that you might have seen that already exist? Uh, should I do a custom or scratch built case since I might potentially be building a system with like two micro ATX builds in it or, or something like that? Or maybe go the wall mounted route because I could do that too. Um, if you didn't notice in my living room, I have a decent amount of space. I can't see it very well here, but I have a decent amount of space right there uh, to the right of the television. So I was thinking about doing something vertical right there and just mount everything to the wall and have it have it be there. So that's pretty much all I've got for you today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Of course, let me know uh, by voting on those drop holes what you think I should do as far as my next steps for my ultimate HTPC build. Uh, let me know what you think of that passively cooled fanless HTPC as well. I thought that one was pretty cool. Although, of course, a challenge to get all of that together if you're worried about price to performance and you also want to keep everything fanless. Uh, but of course, hit the thumbs up button too if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you want to see more just like it. I'll be back with more videos coming very soon, and we'll see you next time.